Hello everybody, I am Mary Sue the Art Sheep and thank you so much for watching today's video and today I'm going to not be doing a speed paint but a proper introduction to the main characters of my original series, Revolution in Full Color. I did do a little bit of an behind the scenes and showed a little bit of their reference sheets in my last video but this will be a more in-depth introduction plus I've also finished all of the reference sheets so I will be showing those off as I talk about the characters. Well, sort of. One character's reference sheet isn't completely finished. Like, it isn't as big as the other ones. Mainly because I didn't have time, I forgot about him and didn't remember until last minute, and the characters that I already drew were my original goal. I said that I would start on the first character and then end with the last character, so that was like a total of seven characters and I would do those all in the month of January and I did finish that goal, so I was really excited, but then I remembered I had him. So for now, I just drew a simple standing pose, and honestly, that's all I really need for now. Maybe I'll do a more in-depth version of his reference sheet later, but for now, this is all I've got and all I will show. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, after I'm done with this video, I'm going to be doing my persona drawing. Maybe I'll do one more speed paint after that, I'm not sure. Either way, I'm going to go straight on to working on chapter one of this series. If you want to read chapter zero, there will be links to that somewhere around here. And I do recommend reading it before you watch this video if you have not. If you just wanna know about the series though, it's not completely necessary, although I do reference a few <clears throat> things in chapter um, zero. Oh, P.S. All of the stuff, like the information was in, um, these um, bios or whatever you want to call them, introductionaries. Um, these information will all be in the series and be revealed throughout it later on over time, but I thought it would also be kind of fun to just have it in this introductionary video, something to kind of grab people's attention. Oh, PPS, all the stuff here mentioned is completely fictional and belongs to me, besides the background music, so please keep that in mind. Okay, let's begin! Okay, first up you have none ever than our leading lady, Masato Yushoko, who was briefly seen in the last panel at the end of chapter zero. She is the main protagonist of the series and the primary point of view character. However, I do switch back and forth between the POV character uh, quite a bit was in the series. Kind of think Yuga is excellent. Anyway, Masada Yushoko is a young woman who is 17 years old. Not much is actually known about the real Masato. However, despite this, she has built up a reputation to the people of Light City either for her work as Kuro and Echo or as Live Color. The former being a mysterious cat burglar who is believed she has been active for nearly around two years. Despite the strict rule over Light City that is enforced via police and superheroes, the thief Kuroneku has evaded capture to this day, which has led many to speculate as to what type of person Kuroneku must be, and even more important, who is her connections. Meanwhile, Live Color is the handle of a strange individual whose presence dwells within the digital space, as well as a voice who rings loud on the radio waves, gaining recognition as the wild card who runs the illegal radio show, Revolution in Full Color. Despite Light Islands being known for having a large host of varying internet celebrities, podcast hosts, and radio shock jocks, Live Color somehow manages to stand out among them. Well, that is if you've actually heard her, that is. To many, she is just an urban legend, a ghost who people will either refuse to believe in as her existence will shatter their ideal utopia where the government has control over everything, or a ray of hope whose existence could mean that it would be possible to act freely without the government's permission. However, no matter your thoughts, the moment you hear her raspy voice, you will most definitely walk away a changed person. Either as a passionate fan captivated by her eccentric ways and random setup, or someone who will be enraged by her mere existence and the fact that she is allowed to act so freely. Either way, you will be left overloaded with varying questions on how she is able to operate and what her true motives are. 
Like most first-time listeners, more often than not, will actually have found her by accident without even trying to seek her out, either by stumbling upon her website, which is ever moving in its location, and which will sometimes pop up randomly at times, or picking up her radio station, which is hidden among all the ever different channels. Once found, you will hear her talking freely, be it from random takes about foods that she likes and doesn't like, to saying spicy critiques on society that would get any normal show shut down immediately by the government. Having a rather unique voice that shouts out whatever thoughts are going through her head, she does not really have any consistency between the topics she discusses and will switch topics quite quickly, without any warning. At times, she will give out a number even for people to contact her for a live Q&A portion of the show, but for some strange reason, the police have never been able to track her for this number. And of course, she doesn't answer any questions that would give people any clues to her whereabouts or who she truly is. And once the session is over, the number is disconnected and will be changed for next time. There are some times she doesn't even hardly talk and simply plays music, which is a collection of songs that she found on the internet and wants to share with other people, or music that she claims to be performing live off of her violin. She has even been known for cutting into someone else's live streams on more than one occasion. She will then talk back and forth with the host of that stream, and then she will vanish. And even though live color spots aren't deep, consistent, or even that shocking, she has gained a small following just for the fact that she has yet to been shut down or captured by the government. And it is this that has won her a small but loyal fan base of people who view her as a revolutionist fighting the small good fight. But in the end, Kuroneku and Live Color are just small portions of Masato Yushoku. Are they even accurate to who Masato Yushoku truly is? What does she truly feel in her heart? Well, that's a secret she keeps to herself, sharing it only with her cat, Sumi. Quick add-on from Future Sheep. I was supposed to be talking about Masato's cat, but then I realized I never did mention what her powers actually are, so I thought I would do that here real quick. So here they are. Masato Yushoko's superpower is known as lifeblood. When her blood is exposed to air, it can expand and she can manipulate it with her mind to move freely and even change its pigment to any color she desires. Typically, magenta, cyan, yellow, or black are the colors that she will use on default. The color her blood normally appears to be is black. Once under her control, it can then be shaped into various things such as blades, swords, rope, or even puppets which she can control. No matter what object she creates, it can only go as far as 10 meters away from her. Any fervor would cause the blood to lose its effect and turn into normal blood that she can no longer control, which means it cannot be called back into her body. The same would happen if the object she can create out of her blood would be out of her body for more than 30 minutes. Also, the bigger and or more denser the object is, the more blood it will require. If she uses too much blood, she will begin to feel the effects of blood loss and could even run the risk of requiring a transfusion. Because of the source of her powers, dwelling was in her heart and not her actual blood, she can accept blood from anybody into her body, and within 10 minutes she will be able to use new blood the same way as she did her own blood. One side effect to her blood is it is toxic to everyone but Masato. If it touches the surface of anything, it will leave a slight burn mark and sting ever so slightly, not really doing any damage. But if her blood was to get inside a never living being's body, then it would cause paralyzation. If the amount was too much, it could even cause death. Masato uses it to her advantage by shaping her blood as a katana to do a one hit kill against people. As they will be killed moments that the blood cuts them. The thing Masato creates the most with her blood is a katana called Chizakura and free meter puppet that looks like a stuffed cat which she calls Bloody Neko. And that's it. Which is why up next is her cat Sumi. Sumi is Masato's loyal teammate and closest friend. He's a sassy black cat with a bit of white on him, which Masato says gives him the appearance as if someone dumped black ink all over him, hence his name, which is Japanese for ink. Sumi is the only one who Masato truly confides in, and despite being just a normal cat, Masato often talks to him and imagines him talking back as her inner voice of reason. These imaginary talks with him often have him taking shape as a cat boy with black and white hair, cat ears, and pale skin which hasn't been designed properly. Sorry about that. 
Sumi's most notable trait is the fact that he has green and blue eyes. Next up is XR, who is the one who I was referring to at the beginning who doesn't have a full reference sheet, so it's just this one picture. As I said, I kind of forgot about him until last minute, oops, so I just quickly drew this up. Anyway, XR is Masato's partner in crime. Real name, Jeffrey Radcliffe. He is a renowned super genius at computers, robotics, hacking, and tech, and is quite knowledgeable in quite a few other subjects as well. However, all he really does is help Masato run her radio station as the brains behind that operation, but only on the condition she steals whatever tech he desires as Kuro Neku. Their relationship is mostly professional, but is deeply dependent on one another. Deep down, the two probably view each other as close siblings or cousins at the bare least, but would never admit it to each other. XR is mostly different about the state of Light City. Having no desire to change the world he lives in, he just simply lives by himself and does his own work. And the only one he ever helps is Masato, refusing to work for anyone else. Now for the introduction to the members of Nightlight, but first a little background on what Nightlight is in the larger group Lightbringer. Nightlight is a smaller faction to the larger revolution known as Lightbringer, a group who vows to bring the light back to their dark island nation. Years ago, a group known as the Cross of Freedom was set against protesting the government's overreaching control. Their fights start mostly in legal battles, peaceful demonstrations, and people simply going on TV or the internet and spreading awareness to their cause. And for a while, this did draw more and more followers, and people supported their cause, which was the desire for freedom from the government who wanted to control all superpowered children the way they want, which many believed was going against their basic human rights. And the government was doing all of this because of the horrible situation was Robert Kevin Williams, aka Novus. They believed that the government was taking advantage of the tragedy just to give an excuse to their strict state control. For a while, the Cross of Freedom's movement was going fine, however, and gaining more support. However, everything changed when their leader, Arnold Tisdale, died suddenly, and a new leader, Jared King, took his place. Suddenly, the protesters started getting more violent. The people started turning more to violence. Till finally, they made an attack against Sunshine Labs, and the main capital of Light Islands was the help of a Russian terrorist group known as Fila Tagya. The movement was then quashed by the government and shut down entirely. All the people who were arrested on the day of the attack were either imprisoned or executed, and many who were in league with the group were also arrested. Anyone who was suspected, regardless of proven action, was either arrested or, at the bare least, monitored heavily. Many who were legally innocent, as they were simply people who had sympathized with their cause but did not agree with the violence and never took part in any violence, were still branded socially as guilty and viewed as no good insurrectionists. They had their rights stripped away, they were taxed more, and forced to get low-paying jobs or low-status jobs, as no reputable job would hire them. Because of this, the people, some family members of the arrested members of Cross of Freedom, while Evers, just innocents who had no connections but still were discriminated and treated as traitors, all united and formed Lightbringer, a revolutionary group who planned to overthrow the government and replace it with a democracy and bring back freedom to the land and punish the cruel tyrants who oppressed many of its citizens for crimes they did not commit. Led by a mysterious person going by the codename Saxum, all of its members hide behind masks, costumes, and codenames. Even when they are in the privacy of their own hideout, they still refer to each other as these codenames as no member knows the other one's true name. This is to help keep the organization a secret in case one of them were to be arrested by the police and interrogated. They would not know what to say. Lightbringer made its start by making small attacks against the government that were few and far in between. Assassinating government heroes and workers, attacks against light city weapons manufacturers, stealing vast amounts of resources from weapons to food, all to build up their forces over time. Several years prior to the series' start, Lightbringer formed a small league of elite young people to act as their vanguard squad. This faction would be called Nightlight. Each of the members possessed strong superpowers and were all skilled in varying different crafts. 
Though mostly waiting in the wings, spending their time training and honing their talents, there were a few times that the team would go out and do missions. But their primary goal was to stay hidden and wait for the day that they could bring recognition to their cause that one day they would lead the final attack against the government by going against the main force of the government, Dr. Zhang Lu, and her own soldiers. And these are the members of Nightlight. The proud leader of Nightlight, codenamed Go, he is a young man who is 18 years old. Although he was not the first pick to be the leader due to his young age, he has been leading successfully since he was just 15 years old. Having a job as a garbage man now, no one would ever suspect that he was Nightlight's leader just by looking at him, but he has proven himself to be strong and quite capable. Though, there are times he does doubt himself as he feels he was just picked for this role due to him being the only option. But even so, he gives it his all. He is shown to have a strong altitude for mechanical engineering, having a great love for cars and motorcycles and anything in between. He often likes working on those things in his spare time, which does come quite rarely, although sometimes he has made devices that can be used for the team. His superpower is Ring Shot, which gives him the ability to generate rings which can shoot anyone or anything, including himself, at rapid speed over a great distance. When a person or object goes for the ring, it has an aura around it that protects it from the acceleration and once the aura wears off, the object will slow down gradually till it continues at the pace that it was going before it went for the ring. If something strong enough, however, disrupts the object's path by hitting it, the aura will break and said object will come to an immediate stop, which could be damaging, especially if it was a living being that went for the ring. Next is Casimir. He is almost 19 years old and is the vice leader of Nightlight. He was the first pick to be the primary team leader, but was rejected in place of Go due to his lack of communication skills, confidence, and assertion. He is the only member of the team who also does not have any superpowers, which was never negative towards him. This is because he was not actually born on the Light Islands. Despite this, though, he is very strategic and is a very strong fighter and has a good sense of judgment. He is also close friends with Go, sharing a brotherly bond with him and often gives him counsel. He is very skilled at weapons from firearms to hand weapons, melee weapons to even poison. After Casimir, we have V. She is Go's younger sister and is known as the sunshine of the team, being very cheery, sweet, and even a bit devious at times, which does get her into trouble here and there. Always looking for ways to have fun, even in these dark moments. V is quite the ray of light to the team. However, she can act level-headed, calm, and rational when it is required, and is quite skilled in espionage, although one reason for that is her superpower, which is invisibility. She can turn herself or anything she touches, or anything connected to anything she is touching, invisible. It can also mask her presence, including her body temperature, and even her own sound to some degree, in addition to anything she is turning invisible as well. She is also quite good at getting a read of people and has a good judge of character despite her personality suggesting everyone. After V, we have Switch. Switch is a young lady who is 17 years old. She was the third person to join Nightlight, but the first person to join who did not have an already existing connection to a senior leader of Lightbringer, unlike Go, V, and Casimir did. Her uncle actually manages a hotel which is owned by her parents. Her uncle, Ryan Kevin, is also a secret supporter of Lightbringer, and so he provided Nightlight with a hideout underneath the hotel. Switch found out about this and desired to be of help. Due to her passion for the cause and her superpower, she was allowed to join the team. She, however, mostly serves the team by providing them with resources of things that they require as she cannot risk being seen by anyone, at least not right now, as such a fact would give away her uncle's support and Nightlight's secret hideout. So because of this, she mostly just hangs out around the team. She is quite shy, meek, and has no confidence. She is also quite naive about how the world works at times and can be overly romantic on certain subjects. Her superpower is Switch, which is the ability to select two things, either a person, including herself, or an object, and have them switch places via teleportation. She cannot teleport them in places that she cannot visibly see, and is limited to a certain range. Despite these limitations, however, though, it comes quite in handy. 
The next to join after Switch is Lemon. Lemon is a young woman who is almost 17 years old. She is considered the cool big sister of the team. She often looks after her fellow teammates but also does get them into trouble now and then. She is quite savvy in fashion, culture, and up to date in the latest trench. She often makes disguises for the team and helps them out with knowledge on who is the biggest influencer. She also tries to convey a level of strength that is greater than what she actually possesses in hopes of not holding her teammates back, and she desires to look after and protect all of them. Her superpower is known as acid. She can secrete an acidic poison that can melt and burn through anything it touches. It is also unpoisonous if breathed in, but frankly, it cannot be inhaled in its acidic form unless it is up close to someone. She has trouble controlling it, but tries to keep this hidden. Then you have Leviathan. He and his younger brother were the latest two to join Team Nightlight. He is relatively laid back and more lax when compared to the rest of his teammates, especially his own brother, who is quite tense and untrusting. Leviathan, however, really isn't bothered by much and is quite carefree, often making jokes about different scenarios, which can get people annoyed with him at times and also get him into trouble. But he is also very kind and is the first willing to help other people and is very protective of his friends and brother. This combined with his charismatic personality often wins a lot of people over in the end. He is quite skilled in chemistry, engineering, and also has knowledge in explosives as well. His superpower is quite a rare skill known as aura energy. He can generate an aura-like ray that can be used to heal himself or others by regenerating their cells. Or he can also use it as an energy blast that can be shot out like a ray gun from his hands, which can do damage to even solid rock if given enough power. However, both of these require a lot of his own energy. If he uses too much, he will start getting weak. And if he goes too far over the edge, he could even put his own life at risk and even end up dead if not careful. To keep his energy levels up, he requires a lot of sleep and food. In the case of healing someone else though, it also requires their own energy of the person that he is healing since it is their own cells that are being required. If the person being healed, including himself, does not have enough energy, they will not heal. And if something is totally lost or too damaged, it cannot be healed or regenerated. The final member is also the youngest, being only 14 years old, codenamed Viper. He is the younger brother to Leviathan. He is completely different from his brother, however, being closed off, hot-tempered, untrusting, and even bitter. All of this is a result due to his harsh past. Despite his rough, grumpy exterior, though, he can care about those who truly earn his trust, and he deeply cares about his brother being the one person he truly trusts. The two of them made a promise to get back at the government and destroy it for ruining their family's lives, and they hope to create a place where they can both live in peace. Despite Viper's immense strength, he does not go outside and fight like the rest of his teammates, but instead stays at the hideout being the computer geek, for despite his young age, he has proven to be very skilled with computers, having amazing skills in hacking, robotics, and programming. His superpower is one of the rarest in all of existence, mutants, subcategory snake. His body is mutated to have the animal abilities and physical traits of a snake, and as so, he has increased strength, speed, smell, and can contort his body to fit into small places. However, he also has poor hearing and vision, though he can pick up infrared in the dark if he squints. Also, despite being warm-blooded like normal humans, his brain is wired to thinking it is cold-blooded, and so, when the temperature gets to 16 celsius, his metabolism slows down and becomes sluggish like a snake. If he remains in a temperature that is below 7 celsius for too long, his brain functions will be at risk of stopping his heart entirely and will stop pumping blood which will cause him to die. And finally, the most visible sign of his power is he has a 3 meter tail growing from the base of his spine with a rattler at the end of it like a rattlesnake. He also has sharp fangs that can inject venom like a snake, and he has snake-like eyes and patches of scales all over his body. It is because of all these drawbacks to his powers, he stays hidden most of his life. The one time he did go out, it cost the remaining family he had outside of his brother. People have also used this as an excuse to bully and be cruel to him, which is another big reason why he's so bitter all the time. In the end, though, he is an invaluable member to the team 
just like all of his fellow teammates. And with that, we're, we're done. That's all the main characters of Revolution Full Color. Oh, I've been recording this all morning. I'm beat. I'm gonna get to editing this. Hopefully I can edit it so it's actually presentable. Who knows? And then I'm gonna work on my persona drawing. For now, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you liked the art. I hope you will like Revolution in Full Color. I plan on working on Chapter 1 real soon, so hopefully it won't take that long to come out. Won't be that soon either, but hopefully it won't be that long. Until then, thank you so much for watching. If you liked, you can do all the YouTube things. If you did not like, I thank you for watching this far. Anyway, it means a lot to me, and I hope you will all have a wonderful day, and I will see you again real soon. Bye!